Hello, Paul Trini here, and I want to take you through the fundamentals of Illustrator CC in the context of making a logo. So this is what I'm building for you. I'm going to knock this out, but really the fundamentals can be used for a number of things uh, as I have shown here. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, which is actually opening up this begin file. It's just a blank file, and I need to just kind of check out the workspace and reset it. So workspace, I want to change this to essentials. So Switching that to Essentials, you can see how it changes over here, and then I can start minimizing or collapsing icons. I can minimize the library. I can double click in this gray area to kind of minimize some of these other panels as well, because really I just want to focus on the Layers panel right here, and then I can pick Colors later, okay? All right, first thing I'm going to do is cover the Pen Tool, okay? so. Uh, probably the most used uh, tool in all of Illustrator. First thing you need to do is select the tool, and then you need to be aware of the fill and the stroke color right down here. Okay, so actually what I want to do is I want to flip these just by clicking that swap arrow. I want to make sure black is going to be the fill color, and then for the stroke, I don't want anything, just like that. And I'm just going to draw a mountain range, okay? So that's why I want black. Just kind of clicking through, let's just make sort of a nice mountain range something kind of like that that seems to work for me I'm just kind of clicking around and then I can close it by clicking on that last point right there okay so that's all pretty straightforward and I can always like switch it or change the color anything I want to do right as long as that is selected but what I want to do next is uh, add just a little bit more to this in fact this is what I want to do I want to go ahead and I can click on this color square. If I double click on it, I can change the color entirely to say white, for instance. It's gonna change it to white. Uh, but what I wanna do is I wanna click off of it and I wanna use the pen tool and I'm gonna jump in here and just quickly draw like the, sort of like a shadow kinda on the, not shadow, more like a highlight on this side of the mountain. Okay, so just like that. Notice how you can't see it because I wanna select a blue. So I'm gonna go over to the color panel. That's even easier, so selecting just a nice bluish teal color, something like that. And that's actually what I want to use. And I can kind of do this for these different sides. Uh, but this is just getting you comfortable with the pen tool and how that works and changing the colors as well. It's all pretty straightforward, but it just takes some getting used to, to be honest with you. Let's go beyond this, though, because I'm going to make some other uh, some other elements too, in fact some rolling hills. So that's what I want to make next. So uh, what do I want to do? Still use the pen tool. In fact I'm going to change the color just to a nice, in this case a nice teal color. I could change this later. It's going to be like a darker, ah yeah that's nice, that dark, darker tealish green color. And this time I'm just going to do a click and I'm going to click once and then I'm going to do a click and drag. And this is when you get these BZA points that I can manipulate later. So I want to have rolling hills and click there. I can click again and that will give me that hard edge. So I can have it do something like that. Okay, so I can click and drag is going to give me those BZA points, right? Or if I just click directly, I'm going to get those sharp angles just like that, okay? So uh, what have I done? Created these BZA points that I can easily manipulate. How would I manipulate them? Using the direct selection tool. So selecting the direct selection tool, coming over here. Oh, let's go ahead and move this guy around. You know, this is pretty drastic. I maybe I want it to be more of a rolling hill. I can move that down and I can grab the B these BZA points and change them. I can also come over here and uh, for any one of these sides is that if I roll over that line I can adjust accordingly rather than manipulating the BZA points I can manipulate the whole line so that might be easier. If you happen to misclick, you know, notice how it's right there. I could delete it by the way if I just select it and hit delete, but I'm deleting that line segment so I'd actually rather go in here and use the pen tool add and delete anchor points so plus and minus and i'll talk about the anchor point tool in a second but delete anchor point tools what i want to do just boop let's delete those just like that right now if i come back in here anchor point tool what does this do well this changes the anchor point so if i click on it yep it changes it right i click again or click and drag and i can change it again 
So hopefully that makes sense. I can, you know, adjust BZA points and you'd end up with something like this. In this case, I still want sort of those same rolling hills. So uh, with a splash of light, so I'm gonna go back in here, I'm gonna select the pen tool. I'm gonna change the color to something a little brighter. And uh, let's just do like a splash of color right here, right? Because we want that same lighting. So something kind of like that is kind of what I'm going for. Right, and I can change this at any time by selecting the direct selection tool and adjusting accordingly. Okay, cool. All right, uh, so that looks pretty good. Um, I can get more into colors and gradients as well. First off, if I'm using a limited color palette, uh, I can always save them. In fact, I might want to save them as different swatches. So let's just minimize, let's open up these swatches. But with this selected right here, I can come over here. Can you see right there? New swatch. That's what that says. New swatch. I can click right there and it will make just a new swatch. Click, you know, down at the bottom. So I could do that a couple times if I want to like save my colors and I actually saved it to my library. So let's go back in to swatches there it is okay so it actually opened up my library panel so uh, selecting that darker color click let's add that one as well Boop. it's actually opening up this library panel is what it's doing but it's actually loading right there uh, but anyways you can save the colors that you want I'm gonna do one more thing I'm actually gonna do two more things when it comes to drawing is this needs a background so I'm gonna click and drag that blue is selected and just to kind of show you how stacking works okay um, so basically this is obviously in front and this is the background that needs be needs to be behind everything else so I can right click right this is just like in PowerPoint and um, you know keynote and all that good stuff and I can send to back now let's watch right over here as well in my layer panel because you can see the rectangle at the top it's gonna move it to the bottom alright so send to back boom moves it to the bottom you get the idea okay let's actually make this color just like a little bit darker because uh, we don't want it to quite be like you know the same color as the um, that light on the mountains all right okay so let's do one more thing let's take a lips tool again I can draw holding down the shift key this is going to be my moon right so I can come in here I can use the um, the eyedropper to select that color if I want to I'll go back in I can actually make that color even a little bit brighter I don't want it too bright because I'm gonna have some type on it at the end of the day but there's my moon okay and what can I do sure I could do the send to back or I can grab this ellipse down here and drag it down almost to the bottom something like that okay so those are basic shapes and drawing with the pen tool understanding how BZA BZA points uh, work and everything and uh, so yeah let's dive into creating something even more unique as well because what I want to do is I actually want to use the brush otherwise known as the paintbrush tool all right because what I'm thinking is I actually want to paint just some nice trees draw on some nice trees here so uh, paintbrush tool selected I can come in here I want to select a little bit darker color okay same color but darker keep in mind that's the fill and what I'm gonna draw is with the stroke so I can always change this later but I want to swap it so now when I paint so a zoop drawing that line okay so I could start to kind of make this this tree that may or may not be cool right now right I'm just I'm literally just using my um, uh, trackpad on my good old MacBook Pro okay not that great okay and maybe what you want to do in this case is select all of these well this is what I typically do select this and this is an easy way to get to it right up here at the top if I select this menu right here you can select the same stroke color there we are click oh thank you for allowing me to select everything okay so with everything selected, I can then change the brush stroke because I'm not crazy about it, right? I can increase the size right over here, okay? Still somewhat lame, right? Let's go beyond that because I have different strokes right in here that I can open up. So I can say, you know, change the uniformness, right? Just to show you one thing actually will not change, by the way, since it's a brush. But right over here is I could change this to this charcoal pencil, for instance. Now let's increase that size. And now you can see that charcoal pencil actually looks more like 
you know, an evergreen tree in this case. So this is more along the lines of what I want, okay? So I'm still gonna go up here. I'm just going to do, uh, select the same stroke color. Stroke color like that. And I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. Something like that. That looks good. And all is well. In fact, this time I'm just going to go a little bit lighter with it because I'm into like kind of working on this light, but now I'm kind of painting this lighter color just to kind of show that, you know, the light is hitting the top of it and then there's still like, of course, branches underneath. So that's kind of what I'm doing, just kind of creating a tree, which is kind of fun to show you how the brush works. But there's more because you can go to window, you can go down to brushes. And with that open, I'll minimize libraries. Here's my brushes panel. Here are the brushes that you could also access from here. But you can go to this flyout menu and just to point out all these crazy bristle uh, borders, artistic arrows, decorative, all sorts of brushes in here that you can use. So again, that's just your crash course in brushes. All right. So this is coming along nicely. Uh, I actually have my mountain scene, which is exactly what I want. But really, I want this all to fit in a circle. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to introduce you to clipping masks. So I'm going to go over here to the ellipse tool, selecting that, and just drawing over it. I can hold on the shift key to constrain it, okay? Kind of like that, okay? Doesn't even matter the color or any of that. It just does not matter. It doesn't matter at all because it's going to take that top, sh top shape, and the top shape is going to be your mask, okay? So whatever's inside is going to show. So I can select everything, do a right click, right and then right here make clipping mask you can see it right there boop selecting that puts it inside and now i have my nice mountain scene okay so it's coming along nicely let's just refer back to this uh design that i'm working on so again this is what i'm working on you can see it right here it is a little bit brighter i could always adjust it later but i definitely want some type on top of it so selecting the type tool right right here and i'm going to show you what happens if i just start typing so i'm just going to do 20 26.2 right typing that in okay let's selecting it actually defaults to black in this case since it is set to a stroke color so let's make this larger let's change the color to white and let's since i changed the color to white and that was the foreground color that's why it changes it here. So always be aware of like what's in front and what's behind, okay? So maybe in this case, I wanna swap the two. And then for the stroke, I don't want a stroke, just changing it just like that. Holding down the shift key again, and let's increase the size of this just like that. There we have it. Let's open up our character panel. I can go down to type, down to character, opening up that panel right here because this is going to be easier for me to just kind of go through all the different fonts so as i roll over this i can say hey which font do i like Ooh, that's actually open sans condensed bold i want a condensed font that's clean and i'm going to go with this one boom selecting it done and done there are other properties that i can work with but what i want to show you is the sort of the next like cool thing okay and uh, that's dealing with the touch type tool. So I'm selecting touch type tool, right? And then it said, click on a character to select. That's what it said. Oh, let's click on this little character because I think it'd look cool if that was kind of like up there, okay? What if I want this two closer, right? Selecting the two, let's bring that in as well. So that looks just kind of a, this is a cooler way to say, you know, 26.2. Again, just kind of emulating this right here, okay? So that's how I have that put together. And uh, next thing you're wondering is like, how do you get text, you know, sort of to wrap around something? Well, you can start doing something like that. It's actually wrapped around right here. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and cheat because I'm lazy. I don't want to type all this out. I'm going to copy this text, right? So you come in here and you're like, okay, here's my text, paste. There it is. It's all, in fact, it is all uh, black, right? There it is. How do, how do I distort this? This is one way, by the way, I'm just pointing this out right up here. With that selected, I can sort of click right here and say make with warp. Okay, so if I click right here, I can start to warp it. So this is where like the easy way to kind of like warp text works. 
Okay, I can start to warp things around. I can arc upper, lower. I can bulge it. I can wave it like a flag, for instance. So now it's waving like a flag, uh, which is cool. So there's a number of options we could do right in here. Okay, I'm just making you aware of these. These are actually the ones I don't really need to worry about this because actually there is no circle in here, by the way. There's inflate. I don't want that. So I'm going to get out of that, okay? But I'm pointing those out to you. What I need to do before that text is I need to make a path with the ellipse tool. So what's cool is I can do a click and drag by holding down the option key and the shift key. Uh, option key will draw from the center. Shift key will constrain it. And I can make it like that. Let's just make sure it's just a stroke. Kind of put that right there, just using my arrow keys to get that into position. All right, so how do we get that text to wrap around? Well, we select the text. In fact, this is all I'll do is I'll copy it. So edit, let's just actually cut it. Boom, okay. Delete that little guy. And let's go in here, and here are all my text options. So notice how you can do vertical, horizontal. You can do area type tools. So if you like define, if I wanted text to fill the like content to text to feel like fill an area, then I can use area type tool, but I want to type on a path. Perfect. Selecting that, coming over here to the path, clicking on it. Oh, there it is. Actually gives me this hinting. I could just do a paste. Boom. There it is. Now it wraps around. Okay. I can still change this all I want. And all I would do here is just change the kerning. So I start to click on this, you know, many, many times. Let's get it you know, up to like roughly 200 or so, just to get this wrapped, wrapping all the way around like that. Okay, so that's how that works. Keep in mind also centering or aligning center will work. It's probably the trickiest thing is kind of like I clicked here, so that's where it's wrapping from and it's very, very weird how, uh, you know, to determine sort of what's up and what's down. Typically just rotate the path when, and you eyeball it. You can add guides and stuff, but I kind of want it more something like this. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I can dive in here, I'm gonna get a little bit more unique. Let's like, hey, you know what, let's put a circle back there. Let's send this circle to the back, just like that. There's my text. Let's make sure the text is white and moving this into place. And I can even select both of these elements and make sure they are aligned. Click, click, aligning those two and then just kind of nudging them over the, the one above it. And uh, that's how you'd create a logo roughly in good old Illustrator. But what I wanted to really show you how to do is uh, how to draw uh, position items manipulate them, distort them. There's more that we can do, colorizing items and uh, stuff like that. But another great way to learn is if you go to File, New, I want to point this out to you because this is awesome. I might even steal some elements from here, are all of these different templates that you have available. So you can go to Print, Web, Mobile, Art and Illustration. But look at all these cool like posters and cards and retro logo kits as well. So I can come in here and open up this retro logo kit because I'm like, cool. Oh, how would it look if I grab one of these elements and maybe put it around my design? So a number of things you could do. In fact, I kind of like this one. In this case, you need to ungroup, but I like this because this kind of points out and shows kind of how things are made, right? So we can see this is just one solid shape. I can copy it. Let's go back in here, pasting it in. Let's use the eyedropper tool to grab that nice green and scale it up. But I think those, obviously those templates are really cool to get you up and running fast. They're great for ideas and it's great to just kind of see how things, how other people make things. So uh, that's like huge, I would say, just kind of making these little bumps like these little mountains are out there. And again, I'm holding down the option key and that will draw from the center, right? Once it's on top, I can uh, send to back just like that. Okay, so I could have something like that. It's kind of more of a seal. And keep in mind, I have them all in here. And I have been working on one layer, just so you guys know, if you are from, say, using Photoshop, you can add additional layers, and I can have this be the text, for instance, and I can take this text here, and this text here, for instance, right? I could take both of these elements and cut them and put them on this layer. If this just helps you out, paste in place, you know, you can go ahead and use it, but you kind of 
Uh, if it helps you be more organized, you can do that. But that's what I wanted to show you. Sort of logo creation in good old Illustrator. There's so much more you can do just grazing the surface. And I encourage you to have fun, make your own designs, your own monograms, all in Illustrator CC.